everyone. It's Amber again. Um, I just wanted to um, share my story um, in reference to um, the, I don't know how to say this, but the feeling that you have once you become a mother and you don't even have to be a single mom. You just have to be, you know, any type of mom for you to know that, you know, it's a struggle between um, not losing yourself to finding who you are post um, pregnancy, post birth, and it's a conflict. And I think a lot of people, they, you know, they really have good intentions for you, but it's a definite like physical struggle, a mental struggle, a psycho um, psychological struggle when you are struggling um, just being in the moment, like right after pregnancy, you know, you're tired, you have all these hormones in you that doesn't have you um, feeling your best, looking your best. You have so many emotions going on. You want to cry. You want to laugh, you know, and for the most part, I think for the first months, I've just kind of, I was really mellow um, and really, I, I wouldn't even say mellow, but <laughs> like a step below mellow, like I was like melancholy. It was just so um, hard and to even just exist day to day and um, what I had was you know um, people that share make sure you don't lose yourself and you know da, 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 especially when you get married and everything and all of that happened at the same time for me and so um, I believe that grace definitely should be given um, knowing where somebody is in their point of life. So somebody may have, you know, got married and then five or 10 years later, they had their child. Whereas it's different when you have, a, when you got married, had your child, you know, all of this at the same time. <laughs> and so um, postpartum is, is, is a real thing. It's a real thing. And postpartum can happen when, um, you know, you, as for me, it was the first time, it was a, um, being a mom for the first time. And I just didn't know where to go and, um, and, and where to go. I, I didn't really have any guidance, even though people were telling me what you should do. I really didn't have any guidance. Um, because as a mom, you're thinking about, you know, well, this is, this is what I'm going to do, but you really don't know. And so you have all these hormones and everything. And you're like, Oh, this is what I'm going to um, do as a mom and I'm trying to, you know, be, you know, sane and trying to keep my baby safe. And you just don't know, like everybody is bombarding you with help that you just like, I just need a minute to think about what, what type of help I need. Cause people are like, Oh, well, I just want to do this. And what, you know, I want to do this and everything. And you're just like, I'm just, what type of help do I really need right now? <laughs> like I need some sleep. But I need to trust that you are going to be okay with my child alone while I'm asleep. Um, that's a real feeling. Um, and so I, I believe that grace definitely um, in, a, in a mutual understanding have to be um, displayed when you are um, um, a first time mom. And especially those surrounded, even though it's with love, it's, it's it just feels bombarded. It just feels like, you know, crowding. And um, so my, you know, I'll just share that, you know, when I first had her, I didn't, I didn't, I, I did lose myself because everything was happening at the same time. And so I was trying to get accustomed to marriage, trying to get, you know, um, trying to stay healthy and safe and during my pregnancy and then had her trying to keep me healthy, trying to allow me to eat after she had, um, after I gave birth to her and she had a schedule. So I had to really be on her schedule. So it was just so many things that was happening that I began to like lose myself. I began to like, well, <laughs> my life revolves around, um, it was still pleasing God, but I, I hope that I was because, you know, God instituted family um, as a ministry and it is, it is a real ministry. 
Um, and so I hope that I was pleasing God, even though my personal relationship was there, doing what did I need to do at the time that I was doing it, hoping that I was. So I was trying to sow into, you know, my marriage, sow into my um um, newborn child and a lot of people was like well you know don't forget your marriage and stuff and I I get it um, I get it but at the same time you have um, a newborn child that has to be taken care of and so it's not like oh I'm just going to sew into my marriage and just put this screaming baby in a room until you know we have our alone time and everything um, I needed rest and recuperation um, that I really felt like I didn't get and I wasn't supported in that area. Like a lot of, it's, it's just a lot of people in your ear saying, make sure that you do this and make sure, you know, that, um, you know, do this and your husband's still there and, you know, all of that. And I, and I get it, but at the same time, I didn't, I didn't get it. And so it was a lot of, a lot, a lot of stress on me at that time um, to be who everybody said that I should and not follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit. When you, when you follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit, um, you are able to see what you need to do for that day. And right now, when you have a newborn um, baby, they need nurturing, they need food, and you have to help them because they're helpless. And um, I felt like people were telling me and sharing to me, you know, basically put your child away um until you know your marriage is satisfied and at that time it, it wasn't satisfied like my marriage was never satisfied how much I felt like I did it was never satisfied and so um it was it was a real struggle it was a real struggle <laughs> um so yes it was a definite struggle to find the balance and the in-between of um you know, sewing into your child and your child's needs or who are who are just very dependent on you. Um, a child is a dependent and that word is as strong as it sounds, they are dependent. And then your marriage, which is new as well, and that needs to sew in. So when you got two new things going on, it's very difficult to maneuver um, through it. So I think a lot of patience and understa um, understanding um, wasn't, had you know on either on either ends because you know at that time you know I'm like well I just had <laughs> this child I got all these hormones going on I got so much stuff that I have to do and I you know maybe needed um like a break I just felt like it just it just wasn't had at that time um there I remember there was only one person that I could probably um, or she could probably relate to me because she had a similar experience. Um, but I never reached, I never reached out to her, but she always crossed my mind. And I was like, I, I really should have reached out because she had a similar story with, um, you know, having a marriage, um, with a short, you know, um, relationship. Well, yeah. Well, short relationship. As far as I knew now, I don't know if she knew him like you know previous or whatever but she had like a, you know a short relationship and she got pregnant right after and they are still married to this day and have two kids and so it, it's a special place to um it's a special place to be when you have two new things going on and how do you handle and what type of um understanding is needed on both ends and so you in that chaos you lose yourself you can lose yourself and it's a real thing and don't feel bad don't get beat up about it don't you know cry because it's a real sentiment that you can lose yourself but um and i'm and i'm here to encourage you that none of the formulas that anybody could say can work for you you know how the holy spirit can move you daily and that's what we need to follow and, you know, as well, the Holy Spirit will lead and guide, like, the postpartum, the the advice, the, you know, everything could be so loud that you can literally lose yourself. And I remember going to a, um, um, 
a women's ministry meeting at my church. You know, I had Dallas. I think I had her. And um, at the actual meeting, because she was always, I always had her. And, <laughs> you know, I broke down and I said, you know, nobody asks how you're doing anymore. They always ask, like, well, where's the baby? Where's Dallas? Where's, where, you know, and I'm like, I am a human too. You know, before there was Dallas, there was me. I'm, I, like, I felt like nobody cared about how I was doing. I felt like nobody cared how I was doing. And so I had to gut that up. I had to gut that so many months that nobody, like, took the time and to say, hey, what is, um, Hey, how, you know, how are things going? How are you doing? And that feeling is real and it's not selfish. It's just that, you know, I was in a very, very vulnerable, I was in a very, very, very vulnerable um, stage that I, I felt like only few could, few could relate um, to what I was going through. And so I just had to chalk it up and put my feelings aside. And people were like, yeah, you know, you're gonna have to be selfless and sacrifice and all of that. But I wasn't being poured into. I felt like I was pouring and pouring and kept pouring and kept pouring and put aside the feelings that I needed. I needed my husband to 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 nurture me. I needed my husband to, you know, say, hey, can, what can I what can I do for you today? I needed my husband, you know, to 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 handle the baby just so I can go to the grocery store alone or just so I can go to take a nap and feel like she's safe you know like stuff like that like I need it and I wasn't getting and that's the whole point and you know I, I remember reaching out they say well he you know he needs to do this and he needs to do that I was like but that's not helping me because I know what he needs to do but what what about me how can I you know how can I move forward how can I handle this situation basically on my own because that's how I'm doing it. like in the hospital I, all I had you know I had her like you know I needed a nap you know I looked over you know my husband at the time was napping and sleeping like I'm like who had this baby <laughs> you know and so ever since the day she was born she's been a joy but it's been so much you know and she's three now she's very independent now you know and so it, it it's a very fragile place when 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 a woman um is pregnant when she just had a baby and when she just got married and that was the whole two years that i was experiencing and because it wasn't handled properly everything you know fell and then you know after you know that then I went through the divorce I had like the most traumatic three years <laughs> ever <laughs> from 2000 it was actually two years I got engaged married had a baby and divorced within two and a half years and it's real and it's so real it's so real it's so real and so um, that's just my, you know, postpartum um, story. That is my, you know, version of losing yourself when you have like all of this, you know, going around you. And that's what surrounded my circumstance. I can't say what surrounded everyone else's circumstance because they may have different circumstances. But that's what surrounded mine. And it was only by the grace of God that I just relied on him so much and he promised me so much and he showed me all of his goodness through all of the pain that I was going through and all of the discouragement. He showed me all of his goodness and it encouraged me to keep going. And that was the only thing. If I didn't have God at that moment, I probably would have committed suicide, gave my baby away, did something because it was so hopeless. But God puts up an ounce of hope where we have none just to say keep going you know I surrounded myself I kept going to church you know surrounding yourself with believers surrounding yourself with people when you are not a hundred percent and you're at 20 and they're at a hundred percent they can encourage you and they can say keep going you know and likewise when people are you know 20 percent, and you're at 100 percent. you can t return the favor and that's why the bible says you be around like-minded people because you have to have that in your system otherwise you will be going crazy and so without 
God's help, I can truly say that he has helped me through my darkest days. I, it was not my own strength. It was God flowing through me. And so, you know, I encourage anybody who, who runs across, you know, this video to, to know that it, it, it is possible. I am so, you know, I am, I'm in, I am such in a better place than I was three years ago. Three years ago, it was, it was not looking good, but I can say that I was there, but now I'm here and it gets, it gets a whole lot better, but it, you have to have God. You have to have him. You have to have him. Um, thanks for watching.